This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Spring Baccalaureate Services for 2021. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You are the source of all wisdom, all knowledge, and all truth. We thank you and praise you, O God, for the ways that you have sustained these students, their families, and their professors and other faculty through these past four years, and most especially during this past year. All of us, O oh Lord, have faced unimagined challenges, such as a global pandemic due to a new co coronavirus, as well as the public killings of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and many others whose names are not known. We have also seen the results of a fair and just election challenged. And now state legislatures are making attempts to reduce voting rights. Through all these challenges, you, O oh Lord, have been our guide and our companion on the way. And thank you for bringing us to this time and this space where we celebrate and honor all that these students have accomplished during their college years, inside and outside the classroom, you have shaped them to be visionary leaders. And because you have led these young adults thus far, we entrust them to your continued guidance and care. Bless them and keep them in your way. Order their steps in your word, that in all their endeavors, today and in the years ahead, they may serve their families, their communities, the church and the world in ways that bring honor and glory to you, Almighty God, the Everlasting Father. And this we pray in the name of the one who made us out of love. In the name of the one who redeems the whole world and delivers us and makes us whole. In the name of the one who will guide us and sustain us. Now and forevermore. Amen. Greetings, Claflin family. Despite our challenges during the past year, we still give honor and thanks to God for this joyous occasion. Members of the class of spring of 2020, the fall class of 2020, and the spring class of 2021, Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, parents, relatives, friends of the university, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to welcome you to our traditional Claflin University Baccalaureate service. I want to especially thank Reverend Benjamin Snoddy, who will deliver our baccalaureate message. To the parents, Claflin thanks you for your support you have given to our students during their matriculation at this historic university. They could not have done this without you and without you being there to help them through and achieve their dream of earning a college degree. This baccalaureate service is keeping with the 152 year religious heritage of our university. And it is also a way of pausing to acknowledge that you didn't get here alone or all by yourselves. Never forget that the Lord has been with you all the way and sometimes carrying you when you could not carry yourself. Today, we thank him for blessing you. And I strongly believe that there are so many more blessings to come, but you only have to ask and only have to believe. I also believe that you're leaving Claflin feeling fulfilled and satisfied with intellectual enrichment that you have received from this outstanding institution. I declare without hesitation that you are prepared for a strong citizenship and be visionary leaders. As you journey towards a productive career, I encourage you to take God with you and whatever you do, and I highly recommend it. 
Your Claflin University family wishes you an awesome life that you will celebrate and do things that will make your alma mater proud. Thank you, and may God continue to bless each and every one of you. Greetings. Today I'll be reading Proverbs, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10, from the New Oxford Annotated Bible, beginning at verse 1. My child, if you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, if you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk blamelessly, guarding the paths of justice and preserving the ways of his faithful ones. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity. Every good path for wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Thus I have read Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 10 from the New Oxford Annotated Bible. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. Greetings. I will be reading Philippians 4, verses 8 through 13, New Revised Standard Version. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now, at last, you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Thus, I have read Philippians 4, verses 8 through 13. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. One of Claflin University's time-honored traditions is the recognition of Claflin alumni who are celebrating the 50th anniversary of their graduation from On a Hill Top High. These revered graduates comprise our golden class and they have helped lay the foundation for Claflin's legacy of producing globally engaged visionary leaders. This year, in addition to paying tribute to the golden class of 1971, we will also honor the golden class of 1970 that we did not celebrate last year due to COVID-19. In addition to today's presentation, the members of both golden classes will receive a golden diploma to commemorate their 50th anniversary as leal and loyal sons and daughters of Claflin University. Now we present to you the golden class of 1970 and the golden class of 1971. Class of 1970, George Alexander, Clyde A. Bess, Rose Marie Bland, Vera McKnight Bodison, Linda Tucker Booker, Gloria A. Grant Glover Breland, Clarence Bridges Jr. Sally Black Bridges. Ludie Fulton Brown. Carolyn Oliver Campbell. Idella Waymer Carson. Lucinda Ladson Cohen. Queenie L. Crawford. Gladys Marant Evans, posthumously. Vernetta Pinckney Frederick. Charles B. Gary. Christine 
Donna McPherson Harris, Velma Martin Haywood, Janethea McCutcheon Hollis, Almeda Taste Howe, Shirley Ann Hugey, Joseph H. Jefferson Jr., Shirley Nelson Jefferson, Willa Marion Jennings, Dolores Williams Johnson, Liz Zimmerman Kitt, Linda Faust Keaton, Ernestine Kennedy King, Gloria Elaine Gant Lambright, Janice Wanamaker Marshall, Eugene Mincer, Evelyn Bush Pringle, Ronald A. Ravenel, Thelma L. Brown Ravenel, Betty Jean Sanders posthumously, Joan Stewart Stevens, Shirley Taylor, Glendra D. Smith Watson, Jennifer Green White, Patricia Jennings Williams, Jeanette V. Wright, Class of 1971, Sherry Ann Young Bess, Lily Ann Robinson Bonnet, Ollie M. Glover Boyd, Willie D. Brigman, Connie Irvin Brown, Willie Lee Burgess, Maddie Jackson Burroughs, Harvey E. Choplin, Alexander Cummings, Rosa Waymeyers Kennerly Dance, Mamie Jenkins Davis, Mary Frances Thomas DePass, Perlene Williams Friday, Brenda Brown Glaze, Dolores Dickerson Glover, Loretta Dash Green, Samuel W. Hanna, Carolyn Curry Harper, Jessica Hawkins, Jimmy Howell, Cassandra Arletha Jenkins, Barbara Brown Leopard, Maisie Glover Lewis, Martha Milton Logan, Erlene Fleming McClary, Paul Edward Nelson, Kathleen Peterkin Quick, Radine James Tate, Ella Ree Hughes Swinton, Lois A. Williams Thompson, Verley A. Graham Tisdale, Veronica Copeland Vincent, Brenda D. Bynes Watson, Audrey Lavelle Montgomery Wilborn, Connie D. Williams, Fred Thomas Williams, the Golden Class of 1970 and the Golden Class of 1971. to encourage yourself sometimes you have to speak victory during the test and no matter how you feel speak the word and you will be healed speak over yourself 
encourage yourself in the light. Sometimes you, sometimes you, you gotta pat your own self on the back, yeah, yeah, you. Encourage yourself in the light. Sometimes you have to speak the word over yourself, yeah. The pressure is all around, but God is present. Remember giants, they do fall. Speak over yourself, encourage yourself in the light. Oh, as I minister to you, oh, I minister to myself. Life can hurt. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Whoa, whoa. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. And no matter Speak the word and you will be healed. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Whoa, 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 whoa. Greetings to all. It has been my pleasure to serve as the class of 2021's Senior Class Vice President. And today it is my honor to introduce this year's commencement speaker, the Reverend Dr. Benjamin D. Snotty, who is a native of Welford, South Carolina, which is located in Spartanburg County. At the age of 13, he accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, and he has surrendered to God's call to preach the gospel since 1965. He was ordained in 1967 by the Spoutenberg County Baptist Association at the request of New Trinity Baptist Church of Welford, South Carolina. He is a graduate of Claflin University of Orangeburg, South Carolina, and of the Morehouse School of Religion and the Interdenominational Theological Center of Atlanta, Georgia. He completed his doctoral studies at McCormick Theological Seminary in Chicago, Illinois. He also completed four quarters of clinical pastoral education in the hospital and correctional settings, respectively, and one year of advanced pastoral psychotherapy at Spartanburg Area Mental Health Center. In 1992, Dr. Snotty received the Honorary Doctor of Divinity degree from Morris College in Sumter, South Carolina, and from Benedict College of Columbia, South Carolina, following his commencement address to the graduating class of May 2014. Dr. Snotty served as a pastor of the Bushy Pond Baptist Church in Norway, South Carolina, and of the Tabernacle Baptist Church of Blackville, South Carolina. In addition, he has served as a clinical chaplain of the South Carolina Department of Corrections for four years. From 1995 to 2000, Dr. Snotty served as the president of the South Carolina Baptist Congress of Christian Education. In May 2013, Dr. Snotty completed five years as the 15th president of the Baptist Educational and Missionary Convention of South Carolina. Currently, Dr. Snotty is a member of the BBNT Advisory Board of Spartanburg County and is a member and chairman of the Board of Directors of the Boys and Girls Club of the Upstate in Spartanburg, South Carolina. He is also a member and chairman of the Mount Moriah's 
Foundation Board of Directors, which was established due to his visionary leadership. Dr. Snotty has received numerous honors and awards to include the Silver Beaver, the Order of the Palmetto, and the Duke Energy Citizenship Award. He is also a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, and he is featured in the Claflin University's Alumni Hall of Fame. Dr. Snotty believes that service is a tangible expression of love to those around you. He is a servant of God who is committed to leaving the world a little better than he found it. Dr. Snotty is married to the former Ms. Sheila L. Harvin of Pinewood, South Carolina, and he is the father of two adult daughters and the grandfather of one granddaughter, age 15. And now I present to you the Reverend Dr. Benjamin D. Snotty. To the president of the historical and prestigious Claflin University, to the president's cabinet, to the distinguished board of trustees, to the faculty, staff, student body, and to the 2021 graduating class of the historic Claflin University. It is my distinct honor and privilege to share in this exciting and memorable event. I am a 1969 graduate of Claflin University, and I can't begin to tell you what it means to me to share with you words of wisdom and encouragement to help position your life's journey. Thank you so much for entrusting me to be a part of the history of my alma mater. I commend President Womack for accepting the mantle of leadership and continuing the great visionary and innovative legacy of this great university. Congratulations to the class of 2021. You did it. You achieved it. You made it. God blessed you. Today is truly a day to honor your achievements. Although your matriculation may have been tedious, frustrating, and challenging, those negatives are overshadowed by the experiences of joy, learning, discovery, and new relationships. These experiences you will treasure as you enter into this new chapter in life. You have the right to rejoice and to celebrate on this day because of your achievements. After the celebrating and rejoicing ends, the question remains, where do I go from here? All of you will depart from Claflin University, traveling in different directions, seeking to establish a life of success and fulfillment. As you go, I would like to share a message of purpose and inspiration. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, 14 through 16, the New King James Version of Scripture states, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I would like to talk from the subject, going forth as lights in the world. Going forth as lights in the world. Today is the day that begins a new chapter in your life. The content of your life's chapters will be relegated on the decisions you make and the passions you have and the goals you pursue. It is my hope to encourage you to go forth as lights in the world and remember that these dark places in life are the places that you want to bring your light and help the light to shine for goodness. Our world and America are faced with many serious problems. As a nation, we are in dark places. The darkness is revealed in health disparities across this country. One glaring disparity is COVID-19. The far-reaching impact of COVID-19 is disproportionately affected African Americans more than the majority population. It has brought about financial hardships, learning loss, social separation, deaths of loved ones, fear, and fatigue. 
As of April the 10th, over 561,000 have died in America because of the attack of this invisible disease. We need a light to shine in this dark place. Systemic racism, inequalities, and injustices are some of America's Achilles heels. They reflect the weaknesses and disparities that are breaking down all facets of our American society. The disproportionate number of African Americans in the penal system and that the persistent of police brutality and police involved killings that have led to the deaths of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and Carlos Carson are further evidence of systemic racism, inequalities, and injustices. These Achilles heels are prevalent and pervasive across all domains. The economic and income inequity among African Americans is another major disparity. In 2019, the median black household earned just 61 cents for every dollar of income. The median white household earned, while the median Hispanic household earned 74 cents. This statistic further reflects the income gap of African Americans. Somebody needs to right these wrongs. Will you let your light shine in this dark place? Let us note the educational attainment levels of African Americans. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, 64% of white Americans who attend college graduate. Unfortunately, only 60% of black college students do graduate. The value of education must remain a priority in the black community. The late entertainer, James Brown, had it right when he said, without an education, you might as well be dead. Many parents are less involved in their children's educational achievements and pursuits. Something must be done to help our young people to experience hopes, dreams, and successes. Class of 2021, I hope you will make a conscious effort to invest in young people's lives just as someone has invested in yours. Too many of our youth cannot communicate, read, or write at appropriate levels. Education is the key to economic possibilities. All our young people need to be challenged. They need to be challenged academically so their future will be brighter. It is dark. Class of 2021, I am calling on you to go forth as lights in the world to make what seems impossible possible. You will officially graduate on tomorrow, but continue to dream, continue to be creative, continue to have purpose, and continue to grow intellectually and spiritually. There are many dark places in our communities and in the world where you commit today that you will leave this world better than you found it. In the scriptures, Jesus reminds us you are the light of the world. Own your light and shine your light. Don't hide your light with apathy. Don't hide your light by being self-centered. Shining your light means to utilize your God-given gifts to work for the betterment of society. Let people see your good works so that they can experience the presence of God through you. How can you allow your light to shine as you go forth in the world? How can you make a difference? First, you can show forth your light in the world and make a difference by envisioning what can be. By envisioning what can be. Envisioning the future exceptionally means creating a pathway for the disadvantaged and the marginalized. Becoming a, becoming a voice for the disenfranchised 
is an excellent way to show forth your light in a world of darkness. Stacey Abrams of Atlanta, Georgia, is a prime example of someone who used her voice to mobilize and instill hope in people who lived in hopelessness. Her light woke up the political spirit of an African-American people in Georgia to galvanize the people to get out to vote. Because she did, you know the rest of the story. Look at the late Dr. Martin Luther King, a freedom fighter for justice and equality, who led the national civil rights movement. These two ordinary people made extraordinary contributions with their voices. Graduates, your voice is just as valuable. Remember that ordinary people become extraordinary when they do extraordinary things. Envisioning what can be and acting on it is where the difference is made. Many people talk about what can be but do nothing about it. You are ready. You are prepared to tackle the most difficult task. So go forth and let your light shine with dignity and shine with character. Secondly, you can show forth your light in the world and make a difference by creating a stubborn determination to do good. By creating a stubborn determination to do good. Doing good grows out of our character and goodwill. We must be steadfast in blessing the life of others, especially those who do not have the wherewithal to stand for themselves. Graduating class, you have the capacity and tenacity to do good, or you can choose to do evil. There is a parable of an old Cherokee Indian teaching his grandson about life. He said, a fight is going on inside of me. It is a terrible fight, and it is between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, self-pride, superiority, and ego. He continued, the other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person too. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather which wolf when the old Cherokee Indian simply replied, the one you feed. This story reminds us that we are in charge of our actions. Develop the good in you with persistence. Exercise your stubborn determination because I and so many others are depending on you to help eradicate the evils of this world. So practice stubborn determination. It will motivate you to become a powerful good by showing forth your light in the world and uh, making a difference. Thirdly and finally, you can show forth your light in the world and make a difference by taking others along with you. By taking others along with you. There is an African proverb that states, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. As you allow your light to shine in the world to make a difference, remember to take others along with you. Jesus did not go it alone. He brought 12 disciples along with him. Going far for Jesus was to have others to continue to work where he started. He knew he could not reach far and wide without involving others. Therefore, he called others to join him on the journey. He mentored them and became an example for them so he could go farther. 
we as individuals can do good in order to benefit others. But when we engage others in our good works, we can go farther. The farther we go with others, the more we can make a difference. The bigger the difference, the greater the legacy. The late John Lewis, an outstanding civil rights activist and a member of the US Congress stated, nothing can stop the power of a committed and determined people to make a difference in society. Congressman Lewis also stated, you are light, you are the light. Never let anyone, any person, or any force dampen, dim, or diminish your light. The aim of good work is not for people just to see your good works. It is to glorify God. According to Jesus, when we do good works for self-recognition, we have our reward. When we do good work for the good of another, we do it unto God. Jesus said, what you have done for the least of these my little ones, you have also done it to me. In conclusion, I challenge you, the 2021 graduating class of Claflin University, to go forth and show your light in a dark world. Challenges are needed. Great opportunities are waiting to be born. Class, you can do this. You can make the difference. Remember to envision what can be, to create a stubborn determination to do good, and then lastly, take others along with you. I bid you to go and make your life count for something. Don't let these years at Claflin University be for naught. We are praying for you. We expect great things from you. Now in the words of the late John Lewis, I challenge you to go out and get into good trouble. Be that light, shine in a dark world. God bless you, I pray a rich future for you. Just to see you, 
for our benediction today, we will use some of the words of Bishop Andy Lankford. Let us pray. God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom we are taught the way and the truth. Bless the class of 2021, the spring class. Bless the fall class of 2020 and the spring class of 2020. As they now finish their course of study, we thank you for those who taught and worked beside them and all who supported them along the way. Walk with these graduates as they leave and move forward in life. Take away their anxiety and confusion of purpose. Strengthen their many talents and skills. Instill in them a confidence in the future you plan, where energies may be gathered up and used for the good of all people. We invoke your blessings also upon their families, friends, and others who have gathered this day. We ask these many blessings now in your name we pray, amen.